Hey guys, so I'm going to be doing my May favorites today, and this is seriously like the sixth time I've tried to film this video, but the lighting has just been crap, and I've had a million interruptions, so hopefully I can get through this this time around. So I'm going to start calling these videos my most used products videos instead of favorites, um, because I don't necessarily love all these products, but I'm still using them because they serve their purpose. So I'm just going to go through the products that I've used the most over the month and let you guys know what I like, what I don't like, and whether I will purchase it again or not. Um, okay, lighting is crap, I apologize. It's been raining for the last like five days, that's why I haven't put up any videos because I haven't had decent lighting to film. I did get my hair done today, I do not like it. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Let's get into the video. So for shampoo, I've been using my big shampoo from Lush, and this is a semi-liquid, semi-solid shampoo, I don't know. This is what it looks like. And the little granules that you see in there are actually raw sea salt, which is really cool. I love the smell of this. It smells like fresh laundry, which I think is really neat. And this is actually marketed as a shine enhancing shampoo. And I totally think it delivers in that way, but I think it should also be marketed as a clarifying shampoo because my hair is always so clean. There doesn't feel like there's any buildup, no product, no nothing left behind after I use this product. And I just absolutely love this stuff. It's fabulous. Downfalls to this stuff is that I don't like to use it in the winter and my mom actually uses this as well and she finds the same thing but it just makes my hair even more staticky in the winter time for whatever reason. Uh, it doesn't do that in the summer. It doesn't like enhance my frizzies or anything but I definitely don't use this product in the fall and in the winter. My mom and I have started splitting on pots of this because I found little is a little goes a long way for this stuff for sure. And I've just found that I'm not using an entire pot up in the amount of time before it ex the uh, expiry date. So we have been splitting it. We've been using more of it. And it's also more cost effective for us now this way as well. And I have to drive an hour to go to Lush. I won't once I move because I'm moving to the city that has the Lush. So I'm so excited. But that can be a definite downfall as well. Um, if you don't have a Lush near you, you're... This isn't as accessible to you as it is to some people, but I think it's definitely a really great shampoo. If you have extremely fine hair, however, I do find that this product weighs my hair down just slightly. So if you have really fine hair, this is maybe not necessarily something that you're going to want to use. For conditioner, I've been using my Retread, and again, this is from Lush, and this is a really runny conditioner. Um, very, whoa, as I almost dump it on my computer. Very, very, very liquidy. And, um... This, so this is a triple strength conditioner. It's a very thick, very deep conditioning treatner, treatment for your hair. I have been having a lot of trouble with dry, um, damaged hair lately just because I always have that problem with change in the seasons and it's been so wet and rainy and gross out and cold that, I don't know, my hair is just really reacting to it. So I've been using this all month and I absolutely love it. The only thing I really dislike about this is the smell. It smells like musty, moldy, wet towel that you left under your bed for days and days. And I know that people are going to argue with me and say it doesn't smell like that, but mine stinks. Mine absolutely stinks. And I thought it was my pot and I smell all the ones in Lush and no, this product just to my nose stinks. I don't like it. And the smell lingers in your hair, which is really gross too, but I can get over it because it's an amazing product itself. A lot of people find that they have issues with conditioners from Lush because they are not silicone based conditioners, which means that uh, they don't leave that like slick, silky residue in your hair when you um, originally put the conditioner in your hair. But what I found that I works for me with this is if I use a wide tooth comb in the shower. So I use the product and then with um, a wide tooth comb, I comb the product through my hair and then the conditioner gets in. It penetrates really well. I don't find that my hair is this tangly afterwards because it's already been combed through. Um, so that definitely helps. So if you're not used to using a non-silicone based product um, like this, then that can maybe help you out a little bit. I found that really helped with my American Cream Conditioner too, and I love the smell of that stuff. So the Retread Conditioner is fabulous if you have overly dry or damaged. For styling products, I've still been using my combination of uh, the Rescue Me Repair and Shine Serum from Gosh, which I picked up from Shoppers Drug Mart, and my Argan Oil One and Only Styling Cream, which I picked up from Sally's. Um, the combination of these two are fabulous. I don't have to heat style my hair as much. Um, when I blow dry my hair with a round brush, I find that it styles it well enough that I don't actually have to straighten my hair all the time so it's been cutting down on my drying time it's been cutting down on my heat styling time which in turn is better for my hair and these products together are supposed to help repair your hair so I've it's just been great all the way around so this is absolutely fabulous combination 
you can't get your hands on this gosh one, just go with this argan oil one because I love this stuff. I can't explain to you guys how awesome this stuff is. So if you can get your hands on this, I'll show it to you more close. Do it because it is fabulous. Another styling product I've been using a ton of is my AG Recoil. And this um, product is a Canadian company. It's based out of Vancouver, so I don't really know if it's available everywhere. I purchased mine at EnviroTrends. Uh, there's EnviroTrends all over Canada. There's not a ton of them, but there are EnviroTrends all over Canada. And I have seen these at other salons as well. So this is a curl activator. What it is is if you already have curly or wavy hair, um, using this stuff will help to lift your curl so it's not weighing it down at all, which some styling creams or curling creams tend to do, I have found. So it lifts my curl, it makes it curlier, it keeps it in its shape, and it helps to deactivate any frizz that I may have in my hair, even if I my hair gets wet afterwards, which is fabulous, which I really like about this product. So if I get stuck out in the rain and I've allowed my hair to curl over the, um, in the morning and then it rains, all I have to do is scrunch my hair up again like this and then it's seriously no frizz, nothing. Um, if you have curly hair, I think this is a definite purchase for you. It is expensive. This bottle itself was $33.99, but I have had this for six to eight months. Maybe even longer than that. I think I bought this last summer. And it's still going strong. It's still working really, really well. It is a cream product, so it may feel a little bit heavier in your hands when you initially go to use it. But you will find that after your hair dries, it's not crunchy. It's not sticky. Um, this stuff is just fabulous. Then for hairsprays, I'm using this one. This is the Joyco uh, Joy Mist Medium Styling and Finishing Spray. I do not like it. I said that this is one of my crap products in... Um, my crappy products of 2010. I am, however, trying to use this up. So I picked this particular bottle up at Winners for $9.99. Normally at Shoppers Drum Mart, it's $18.99, which I think is absolutely ridiculous for a hairspray. That's crap, especially for a crappy hairspray. But I just find that this stuff, um, the mist is really heavy with this. It's not a fine mist by any means. It makes my hair crunchy. Um, if you're doing like a wedding or um, a prom or wherever you need to have your hair in an updo that needs to stay like that for a really long time, this stuff is fabulous. But it's crunchy. It's gross. It leaves my hair looking crunchy. I just, I really don't like this. I'm trying to use it up because I was packing and found like five bottles of hairspray literally I'm not kidding I think well I think it was four but still so I'm trying to use hairsprays up this is the one I'm trying to use it's okay when I curl my hair but not any other time I don't like this I will not repurchase that at all so for skincare products I only have one because I had a really bad allergic reaction to an acne cream I decided to try out it was supposed to help with um pores and blackheads as well which I have an issue with I don't really break out I don't have acne very often. I'm hoping to use this product to remedy that situation. I'm apparently allergic to benzoyl peroxide, which I had no idea. I've never really used the product, that um, ingredient in anything before. Um, and my face literally broke out in hives, um, which then puffed and rashed and flaked and chafed. And I looked like I had scales on my face. It was the worst experience of my life. But I started using my Josie Moran Argan Oil on my face as a lightweight moisturizer. There you go. Um, and this stuff cleared my face up almost overnight. The very first night that I put this on, I put a really thick layer of this on, hoping that it would really seep into my skin and help to clear it up or at least help to alleviate some of the burning and itching that I was um, experiencing with the rash. And this stuff, honestly, overnight helped my skin immensely. It took a couple days, but my skin is completely back to normal. It's actually softer and smoother than I think it was before I was using this. So I absolutely love this stuff, and I totally recommend it to anybody. It cleared up my rash um, that had been on my face literally for a week before I started using this, and then it completely cleared up, which was phenomenal. This can also be used as a hair treatment as well. So there's many, many uses for this argan oil. And I really do think that regardless of whether you get Josie Moran's argan oil or um, a different form of, form of argan oil, you definitely should have some. Um, it's great for your skin. It's great for your hair. It's um, great for your cuticles. This stuff is just phenomenal. So I do recommend this and I will be purchasing this again for sure. This is definitely going to be one of the things in my beauty routine that I will never be without. 
So the first thing I've been using a ton of, again, is my Dior Hydra Skin, um, or sorry, Hydra Life Tinted Moisturizer. This is a great tinted moisturizer. It's really full coverage. It's really fragrant, so I've said this before. And I'm in number one, and if you're lighter than I am, which a lot of people are, this is going to be way too dark for you. There's not a lighter version of this, so eh, try and stay away from it, I guess. I don't know. It's not going to work. Um, it's very expensive as well. So if you guys know of a really good tinted moisturizer, because I'm in the market for a new one, feel free to leave it in the comments below. The other thing I found with this is I have had this container for a little while now, so um, this is my second bottle of it. I bought one last summer and then I ended up buying a new one because I loved it so much. It t It's starting to break down on my skin. So within four to six hours, um, it starts to break down and I can see it kind of dissolving on my face. So that's definitely a downfall. So this is a really great tinted moisturizer if you're looking for one and you have the money to spend. For concealer, I've gone back and started using uh, my Realness of Concealness palette. This is from Benefit. This is what this looks like. Obviously, I have used a concealer a ton. So what this little has a mirror at the top. I think the packaging is really, really cute. It comes with Lemonade and Boing, which you can tell I've definitely been using both of those. Um, I like Lemonade to help conceal my under eye circles. Boing I was using for that purpose as well, but um, I found things that work a lot better. So I don't know. I'm not in love with Boing, but it's it works. Um, then these three little guys here, um, there's a lip plumper, the Ula Lift, and then High Beam from Benefit. And again, I've been using High Beam a ton as my highlight, just on my cheeks. Um, lately, I've really been going for um, a less is more kind of look. I don't wear a lot of eye makeup. Like right now, all I have on is eyeliner that I smudged out, mascara, and then a ton of highlight. I've been using a lot of highlight. So I've been using um, the Benefit High Beam. Um, as a base and then my MAC Mineralize Skin Finish over top and this one's in Soft and Gentle. And this is another one of my most used products. So I've had this forever and ever and ever and it is in the regular line so it's not one of those like crazy you can't get your hands on it Mineralize Skin Finishes but what I've actually been using is a blending brush or any kind of fluffy brush so I just kind of brush it in there and then brush it up on my cheekbones and because of the blending brush, I just find that it gives me a gorgeous glow. I should probably do the other side because I'm going out after this. <laughs> I've gotten so many compliments on my skin lately because of this product. Um, and the way that I have been applying my highlight lately that I just have that really glowy, pretty dew look. Which is really popular for spring and summer. So I've been loving that combination. Um, all over bronzer, I've been using my NYC Sunny Bronzer because it's a matte bronzer. I'm interested in getting Hoola and Laguna. I think I'm probably going to purchase both of them this summer, even though I need a new bronzer like I need a freaking hole in the head, but that's okay, whatever. Um, another bronzer I've been using, and I really don't like this, nor do I recommend this product, is the Lorac Tantal Tantalizer Baked Bronzer. And this is just a really small one that I got in a um, bronzing Sephora thing like last summer, but I'm just trying to use it up. Mine's broken, which is awesome. So this is what it looks like. I just find that this bronzer um, is really, really orange. Uh, but I really like the glow that I get off of it, so that's a good thing. But I just, if you can see that, it just looks super duper orange. I have found that I can really blend it in and I can make it look natural. Like I have it on today and you, I, I don't think I look orange. I don't know. Maybe I do. But it's just, and it's super, super glittery. glittery. So when I do like kind of the glowy look like I have on today... I don't mind using that because it has the shimmer and sparkle in it, but when I want more of a matte look or a toned down look, then I don't really like using that bronzer just because, uh, like I said, it's orange and it's super, super shimmery. For blush, I've been using Max Peachy Keen and I've had this for a while and I absolutely love it. It's one of my favorite blushes. It just looks like this and it's perfect for the spring and summer um, because it's that really gorgeous corally color that everybody absolutely loves. I've been setting my makeup with my MAC Mineralize Skin Finish. This one's in medium. And I flip between this one, which is medium, and medium plus, which Brandon sent me. Right now, this one's working for me, but I'm probably going to have to start using my medium plus really soon. I have the perfect way to use this. I've heard complaints about people saying that it's cakey. I was having that issue at first, but I found the perfect way to use that. So if you guys want to know, maybe I'll do it in one of my Back to Basics tutorials, which I will start soon. But I haven't started them yet because I had that really nasty rash on my face and I didn't want to use my like my good camera because I'm not going to film tutorials on my MacBook. I'm going to film them on my camera. 
um, but you can literally see every imperfection with that stuff, so I didn't want to do that. Um, eyeshadows, I've been in love with my Naked Palette. So you guys all know what this looks but like. But I've really been sticking with some really nice, natural, like, naked-looking kind of eyeshadows. For eyeliner, oh my gosh, I love this. So this is just a mini Urban Decay 24-7 um, Glide-On Eye Pencil. This one's in Eldorado, which you can't see. Um, and it's this awesome gold. I absolutely have been loving this. Um, there's a swatch. Not a very good one. But it's a yellow-based gold. It looks amazing. I think this looks fabulous. It's kind of a weird eyeliner, uh, yellow-based gold eyeliner, but it is really, really pretty if you have blue eyes. I've been loving that. Mascara I've been using has been my Fairy Drops Platinum that Jessica sent me. Um, this one, I think, is from Taiwan. Um, this is available at Sephora.com. It's a really cool um, mascara wand, which I'm sure you guys have all seen that. I really like this. I don't know if I will purchase it again. I think it's pretty pricey um, for the mascara. And it's an amazing mascara, don't get me wrong, but not for $28. That is all. Um, lipstick. I've been reaching for this one constantly. And this is just a Revlon lipstick. Um, it's number 35 blush. Mine's all wonky because um, it got, like, squished, as you can see. It was not twisting up or down properly, but this is what this looks like. I have it on right now. It's a very neutral um, color, but that's what I love about it because I've been going with my neutral looks lately that I've been sticking with this a ton, and I absolutely love this, and it's really widely available. It's super moisturized. It lasts forever with this, and because it is a more neutrally lipstick, if you're like me and you love to just like constantly be applying your lipstick or lip gloss, whatever you use, it never looks cakey, um, it never looks overdone. I love this. It's really widely available. If you guys don't have this, this one's in blush. If you don't have this one, I really recommend it. I think it's going to look fabulous on any skin tone, so it's definitely a must-have. I love this. Then finally for makeup, I have my um, Fix Plus from MAC. This is the Fix Plus Lavender. Um, it's a skin refresher. This has been phenomenal for me while I've had my wonderful rash on my face. I've absolutely been loving this. It's moisturizing my skin. It gives me a refresher throughout the day. So if you have a sunburn or acne prone skin or really, really dry skin, I definitely think that Fix Plus is a phenomenal product to have in your makeup kit. And then one final product happens to be a nail polish. And this is a Rimmel nail polish. This is um, Rimmel London Lasting Finish Pro. They say it lasts up to 10 days. It doesn't. It, I can get like five days out of it though, which is fabulous because normally I can only get one or two. This particular color is in number 340 Marine Blue. And I really wish that the camera would pick this up. Ooh, no. But it's got this amazing green sheen to it. It's phenomenal. Normally I don't go for colors like this. I'm a huge fan of like my pinks and purples. But I really love this color. Ugh, oh, Max is my shirt. I really absolutely love this color. It's looking amazing on lately. So great pick. So that's it, guys. If you have any questions about any of the products, um, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Hopefully you guys enjoyed these videos. And I will talk to you guys all soon. Bye.